pronouns are rising, pages 139 through 146. Las Suelas, Plums. As they walked to the bus stop, Isabel recited a list of concerns to Esperanza, sounding exactly as Josefina and Mama had sounded earlier that morning. Put Pepe down for a nap first, and when he falls asleep, put Lupe down. Otherwise, they will play and never go to sleep. And Lupe will not eat bananas. I know, said Esperanza, repositioning Pepe on her hip. Isabel handed her Lupe and climbed the steps of the yellow bus. She found a seat and waved from the window. Esperanza wondered who was more worried, she or Isabel. Esperanza struggled to carry both babies back to the cabin. Thank goodness Isabel had already helped her feed and dress them. She settled them on a blanket on the floor with some tin cups and wooden blocks, then put the beans into a big pot on the stove. Hortensia had prepared them earlier with a big onion and a few cloves of garlic, and instructed Esperanza to stir them occasionally and let them cook on low heat, adding more water throughout the day. She stirred the beans and watched Lupe and Pepe play. I wish Abuelita could see me, she thought. She would be proud. Later, Esperanza looked for something to feed the babies for lunch. A bowl of ripe plums sat on the table. They should be soft enough to eat, she thought. She took several, removed the pit, and mashed them with a fork. Both babies loved them, reaching for more after each spoonful. Esperanza mashed another three plums and they gobbled every bite. She let them have their fill until they started fussing and reaching for their bottles of milk. Enough of lunch, said Esperanza, cleaning their faces and gratefully thinking that it would soon be nap time. She slowly changed their wet diapers, remembering all of Josefina's and Isabel's instructions. She put Pepe down first with his bottle as directed, and when he fell asleep, she put Lupe next to him. Esperanza lay down too, wondering why she was so tired, and she dozed. She woke up to Lupe's whimpering and an atrocious smell. Brown liquid leaked from her diaper. Esperanza picked her up and carried her out of the room so she wouldn't wake Pepe. She changed her into a dry diaper and rode the soiled one into a ball and put it by the door until she could take it to the toilets. When she put Lupe back down, Pepe was sitting up in bed in the same condition. She repeated the diaper changing. With both babies clean, she left them in the bed and dashed the toilets to rinse the diapers. Then she ran back to the cabin. A different smell greeted her. The beans! She had forgotten to add more water. When she checked the pot, they appeared to be scorched only on the bottom, so she poured in water and stirred them. The babies cried and never went back to sleep. Both dirtied their diapers again. The weighted pile by the door grew. They must be ill, worried Esperanza. Did they have the flu? Or was it something they ate? No one else had been sick recently. What had they eaten today? Only their milk and the plums. The plums, she groaned. They must have been too hard on their stomachs. What did Hortensia give her when she was a child and was sick? She tried to remember. Rice water. But how did she make it? Esperanza put a pot on the stove and added a cup of rice. She wasn't sure how much water to add, but she remembered that when rice didn't come out soft, Hortensia always said it needed more water. She added plenty and boiled the rice. Then she poured off the water and let it cool. She sat on the floor with the babies and fed them teaspoons of rice water all afternoon, counting the minutes until Isabel walked through the door. What happened, said Isabel when she arrived and saw the pile of diapers by the door. They were sick from the plums, said Esperanza, nodding toward the plate still on the table where she had mashed them. Oh, Esperanza, they are too young for raw plums. Everyone knows that plums must be cooked for babies, said Isabel. Well, I'm not everyone, yelled Esperanza. She dropped her head and put her hands over her face. Pepe crawled into her lap, making happy gurgling noises. She looked at Isabel, already sorry for screaming at her. I didn't mean to yell. It was a long day. I gave them some rice water and they seem to be fine now. Sounding surprised. Isabel said that was exactly the right thing to do. Esperanza nodded and it let out a long sigh of relief. That night, no one mentioned the number of rinsed and wrung diapers in the wash tub outside the door, or the beans that were obviously burnt, or the pan of rice in the sink, and no one questioned Esperanza when she said she was exhausted and wanted to go to bed early.
top of 144. The grapes had been to be finished before the first fall rains and had to be picked rapido, quickly. So now there were no Saturdays or Sundays in the week, just work days. The temperature was still over 90 each day, so as soon as Isabel's bus left for school, Esperanza took the babies back to the cabin. She fixed their bottles of milk and let them play while she made the beds. Then she followed Hortensia's instructions for starting dinner before turning to the laundry. She was amazed at the hot, dry air. Often by the time she had filled the clotheslines they were strung between the trees, she had only minutes to rest before the valley sun dried the clothes crisp and they were ready to fold. Irene and Melina came over after lunch and Esperanza spread a blanket in the shade. Esperanza liked Melina's company. In some ways, she was a young girl, sometimes playing with Isabel and Sylvia or telling Esperanza gossip as, they, as if they were school friends. In other ways, she was grown up with a nursing baby and a husband and preferring to crochet with the older women in the evenings. Do you crochet? Melina asked. I know a little, but only a few stitches, said Esperanza, remembering Opelita's blanket and zigzag rows that she had been too preoccupied to unpack. Melina laid her sleeping baby girl in a blanket and picked up her needlework. Irene cut apart a 50-pound flower sack that was printed with tiny flowers to use as fabric for dresses. Esperanza tickled Pepe and Lupe and they laughed. They adore you, said Melina. They cried yesterday when I watched them for a few minutes it took you to sweep the platform. It was true. Both babies smiled when Esperanza walked into their room, always reaching for her, especially Pepe. Lupe was good-natured and less demanding, but Esperanza learned to watch her closely, as she often tried to wander away. As she turned her back for a minute, Esperanza found herself frantically searching for Lupe. Esperanza rubbed Lupe's and Pepe's backs, hoping they would go to sleep soon, but they were restless and wouldn't settle, even though they had their bottles. The afternoon sky looked peculiar, tinged with yellow, and there was so much static in the air that the baby's soft hair stuck out.